Good evening. This is going to be um, a contention for the word to uh, contend for the word of God um, on one one or two subjects. Uh, the main subject will be the Sabbath day, and is the Lord the uh, uh, Sabbath rest? Uh, and we contend with a uh, King James Holy Bible. Um, you come across things in 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 your Christian walk, and some things may trip trip you up when you're a young believer and uh, what that will cause is um, you to doubt your salvation or to doubt what you what you believe or perhaps what you don't know yet what you haven't learned yet because we because we all learn and grow we're all learning and growing always um, so there's two subjects I'd like to touch upon just in case there's anyone out there who's who's uh, tripped up on this and um, perhaps gets confused with the uh, the Lord's ministry which was keeping the law and uh, keeping the commandments because it, it, it was a Jewish it's a Jewish book um, written by Jews for the Jews and, and for and for believers but it doesn't all apply to the Christian today so um, on that side of the of the cross uh, when the Lord was uh, teaching um, the, the Jews were living the law uh, they were still under the law and the commandments so I'd like to cover a subject which I've come across recently that people um, I've come across it many times people keeping the Sabbath keep the Sabbath day holy um, and I just want to contend for these principles uh, recently uh, watching a video of a pastor um, contending that uh, oh Jesus wasn't you know the Bible doesn't show Jesus is the Sabbath rest um, and I just like to show it, show anybody from the Word of God that Jesus is the Sabbath rest and I, I'm a, I do that completely with scriptures and my own testimony of studying this this out and showing that the Word of God re reveals the fact that Jesus is the Sabbath rest. So, and then another another thing I'm going to contend for, but not so deeply, is um, once saved, always saved. That's that seems to be under attack. And uh, there's I found a doctrine that goes with that, which uh, is a sin unto death, and and it seems to go with um, people hold to the sin unto death um, proving that you can lose your salvation well I just want to quickly cover that that, that that's not true um, because because that undoes the, the the rest of the word in the Bible if you exegete um, a study of uh, your salvation when you become born again and receive the Holy Ghost you cannot lose your salvation you cannot be because you're sealed unto the day of your redemption uh, you can fall away and be cut off and perish and um, turn aside or backslide and, and that will that will upset the Lord and, and that may lead you into dangerous waters where you, you, you could either become ill you could uh, walk into danger and lose your life but you're not going to lose your salvation so I just want to cover that point quickly just in case some people come across the same things and and it trips them up in their testimony and they lose they lose the abounding grace that they were experiencing because they've come across a doctrine that now they're not sure and they start to doubt and that doubting will keep you away from your first love so i want to just reassure anyone you cannot lose your salvation and just to encourage people to pray trust the lord and and he'll answer you faithfully when you study the word. But I want to cover um, the Sabbath. The Sabbath day, firstly, was a Jewish commandment. It was um, to keep the Sabbath day holy. Um, starting the scripture. I'll go through all the scriptures that um, I know. So I'm going to start in Genesis uh, chapter 2, which is the sixth. Uh, Genesis 1 ca ca covers the first six days of the creation uh, and chapter 2 is the seventh day where the Lord rests I'll read uh, verses 1 and 2 uh, that thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them 
So the Lord's finished his work, he's created a man, he's created the garden, he's created the world, all in, you know, not in that order, but in order, he's created um, the trees, the grasses, all the variations, the animals, then then on the sixth day, man and woman, and then, then we're on the seventh day, uh, verse two, and on the seventh day, now you've got to remember that this is a Jewish book, so the first day of the week is Sunday, then it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's the seventh day, so, so the Sabbath was on the Saturday, and um, on G um, when Jesus was uh, resurrected, um, I'm not sure what day that was, possibly a Sunday, I'm not sure, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, doesn't matter. But the the early Christians would, they didn't keep the Sabbath anymore. They would just gather together and break bread to remember the Lord's finished work on the cross and to honour that um, commandment to gather together and break bread in remembrance of the Lord's body and the spilling of his blood and his empty cross and to fellowship and look up for the Lord's appearing and the only other commandment is that once you're saved is to uh, be baptised so they're the only two real commandments and the commandment to believe to love God with all your heart, mind and strength to do the things that the Holy Spirit does uh, love and um, love, love the Lord love your, love your neighbour as yourself love yourself look after yourself and share the gospel so that's really the uh, the Lord said uh, my yoke is easy uh, take upon my yoke uh, you know the Lord's Lord's work is easy and his burdens are light uh, forgive me I can't recall the scripture but in um, Genesis chapter 2 and on the seventh day so seventh day would be uh, the Sunday uh, the Saturday, uh, because Sunday's the first day. So this on the Saturday, on the on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. So the Lord has rested on on that day. Um, let's go to let's try Luke twenty three. I think. We go into the uh, time of the Lord's ministry. Luke 23. Let's try this verse. 56. Right, yeah. So... Uh, Luke twenty three fifty six, and so this is um, I think this is the disciples uh, and the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment so it, before the, the the resurrection, the, the disciples were still following the the law, the um, Mosaic law, and they uh, rested on the on the seventh day because that was a commandment, like the Lord God rested on the seventh day. And um, right, let's go to Matthew twelve. Uh, start in. Um, Matthew 12 Right, this is where the disciples were uh, accused of um, eating some corn on the Sabbath day I've just got to find the verse um, I think it's first one. And that yeah. And that 
And that time Jesus went on uh, went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did, when he was a hungered, and they were uh, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. So that's the Lord affirming that he's, he's, he's the Lord and he's greater than the temple itself because he is he's God, he is the living embodiment of God, the holy temple in the flesh. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have um, con condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. So the Lord stating that he's, he's the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. It doesn't say he's the Sabbath rest, but it does say that he's Lord of the Sabbath. He, he is Lord of the Sabbath day. Right, let's, uh, I think that's cross -re reference in Mark. Um, Mark 2. Just look at Mark 2. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day and the disciples uh, began as they went to pluck the ears of corn and the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? Uh, why do they on the Sabbath day, behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need? and was a hungered, he and they that were with him, how, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiphar, uh, the high priest, and did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for, the, uh, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So Jesus is affirming that himself was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So that reaffirms again what um, it was covered in Matthew. <clears throat> right. Uh, where now? Okie doke. I've got one more scripture in at that time. Right, so let's start with um, I'm sure there's another scripture I wanted to leave. Anyway, I move on. So, is the Lord the Sabbath rest? Okay, right. Let us let's go to John, John ten. Uh, this is uh, Jesus' affirmation. Uh, right. Uh, Verily, 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 I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. Remember the Lord's the the, the day, uh, Lord of the Sabbath. So he is Lord and of the Sabbath, the seventh day. I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth him in the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the pot, uh, porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not. 
what things that they were which he spoke unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that even, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did, did, did not hear them. I am the door, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Uh, I'll stop there. So the Lord's the door, and uh, that's the way we enter into rest, into the heavenly places, uh, Ephesians 2. So on on the, now the Lord's the day the, the the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So he the Lord rested on on the seventh day. So he is the Sabbath rest. He's the living embodiment of the Sabbath rest, which is salvation. So returning to heaven and preparing a way for um, all believers to follow into the heavenly places, and he's the door. We enter into that rest. Um, let's read Hebrews uh, chapter 4. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So the Lord's saying, make sure you've entered in. Make, make sure you're not only a believer, but make sure you, you've entered in, you, you've been born of the Spirit, uh, John chapter 3, that you've uh, received the Holy Spirit and you, you've been sealed unto the day of your redemption. And once you've received the Holy Spirit, you study the Word to, to have that confirmed within you. Because if you don't do that, you're likely to, the devil's going to be all over you and the first doctrine counter to what you, you believe or, or you're going to get confused and you're not going to know where you stand. That's why it's important to study the Word, to, to affirm what the Holy Spirit has taught you and, and what the Holy Word, the Holy Spirit within the living Word, in the living waters of the Word, confirms what you've received and that you are sealed unto the day of your redemption. And that uh, John 1, if you study John 1, it affirms that if you've believed, you're saved. So you've got the Lord's Word affirming that you you are saved and and that you uh, you cry up a father and and his spirit will speak to your spirit so there's so many scriptures which confirm you've been born again and you've entered into that rest but this verse is just saying make sure you have because many believe there'll be um, uh, on that day uh, the Lord there'll be many crying Lord Lord did we not do you know mighty works didn't we do miracles and the Lord will say well depart from me you workers of iniquity I never knew you uh, so this is what um, Hebrews the author of Hebrews is affirming let us therefore fear less uh, less less a promise being left unto us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So the Lord is the Sabbath rest. He's the Lord of the Sabbath and the Sabbath rest. And, it, and if you've been born again, you're resting in he heavenly places eternally in his rest. You've entered into his rest. That's what it's confirming. So the Lord is Lord of the Sabbath. We go to Galatians 2. Um, now there's many people, uh, if you look at religion, it's always oh, the Sabbath on the Saturday, it's the Sabbath on the Sunday. Well, there is no such thing as the Sabbath day. It's an old, and it's, um, people are on the wrong side of the cross, on the wrong side of history. Because um, we've entered into rest and we don't, let's go to Col Colossians 2. We don't, um... We don't keep the old test, uh, the new test, the old testament law, which was 
what the disciples were in, in the Lord's ministry, they were still under the law. The Lord hadn't been crucified yet. So hadn't passed over into the uh, dispensation of grace. So um, people get stuck on the keeping the commandments, keeping the Sabbath. It's, it's not, it's not uh, correct. And I'm just going to show you that by the word of God. There. Right, let's start with... Let's start with verse 8. Uh, no, let's start in... I'm going to read the whole, whole thing. For I would that... This is uh, Colossians chapter 2. For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom, all, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, like false teachers saying it's this or it's that. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Join and behold in your order, and the steadfast of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the root tradition of men, and you can liken that to the religious orders or the tra traditions of organised religion. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of, of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins, and the un uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that's all the commandments, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, in or in of a holy day or of a new moon or of the sabbath days which are shadow of things to come but the body is of christ let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility worshipping of angels intruder, intruding upon those things which he have not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind and not withholding the head not breaking not allowing anything to um get in, the, in, in between your relationship with the Lord um, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God wherefore if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of, of the world why and though living in the world are you subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not which are all to perish with the, with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honour to the satisfying of the flesh so there we go so you can liken that to religion and, and uh, doctrines about keeping traditions keeping rules um, how they uh, uh, their will worship, they're uh, not in any honour to the satisfying of the flesh. There's no honour in them. They're just to gratify people's egos. Oh, I keep, I keep, I keep the Sabbath. You know, do you keep the Sabbath? Um, 
and they're not contrary to Christ. They're not. Um, they're contrary to Christ. They're not. They don't honour Christ and all the gospel. So I'll just finish off with one more verse in Galatians chapter two. Um, o foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you: receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? He has suffered so many things in vain. Have ye suffered it so many things in vain? if it yet be in vain. He therefore that ministereth to you and you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So, you come to uh, to be saved by faith and you re receive the Holy Spirit and, and what will happen if you re start following these doctrines, uh, keeping the Sabbath, your quench the Holy Spirit and you've returned to the works of the law and that's what um, uh, Paul was uh, the author of uh, Galatians was um, brother Paul was stating that if you return to the things that are finished if you return to those uh, works of the law once you're saved you're going back to the law and then then it's required of you to keep the whole law because it, you know that's what the Lord done. He completed the law. He lived it perfectly, because the law was to convict people because we're created and sinners that no one could keep the law. No one was holy. It was a holy law, and only the author of the law, the lawgiver, which was a type, which Moses was a type. So Moses gave the law as a type of Christ who would fulfil the law. The greater prophet acts. Acts 15, I think. Let's have a look at Acts 15. Quickly. Might be 16. Might be 15. Uh, right, what verse? Right, start with verse 5. But there rose up certain of the Phara uh, sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us. But the Gentiles by the mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So the, the Jews didn't, um, the apostles weren't saved by keeping the law, they were saved by faith. And they received the grace and the Holy Spirit, and it's the same for the Gentiles. This is what the dispute, disputing was about: going, going back to keep the the Ten Commandments or the commandments. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? So no one could keep the law. Peter was very aware of that, and he's reaffirming his, about what the vision he had about to share the gospel to the Gentiles and then later on Paul was called commissioned to be a, a witness and, and to preach the gospel to the, the Gentiles as well as the Jews. Uh, verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. So that, that affirms that um, the Sabbath is a, a, a commandment which is no longer applicable in, in as for the born again Christian. So and the Lord is the Sabbath rest. So I'm going to close there and leave my uh, testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.